Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times this Wednesday, December 9, 2020. For today's editorial, ban on contact sports for minors should be considered carefully. The Philippine sporting community and many sports fans have been driven to fury by the introduction of a bill in the House of Representatives that would ban the participation of minors in full contact sports, such as boxing and other forms of martial arts. We believe the proposal has considerable merit, despite opposition to it. However, those with opposing views have raised some valid points, and these should be used to help craft legislation that appropriately protects minors without taking away the opportunities and benefits participation in competitive sports can provide to young people. House Bill or HB 1526, an act banning minors from full contact competitive sports, was recently filed by Acobico Party List representatives Alfredo Garbin Jr. and Elizalde Co. and seeks to prohibit the participation of minors in competitive full contact sports such as boxing, mixed martial arts, jiu jitsu, muay thai, judo, and various forms of full contact karate. Full contact sports are defined by the bill as any sport for which significant physical impact force, whether deliberate or incidental, on players is allowed for within the rules of the game. It includes but is not limited to boxing, mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu, muay thai, judo, and various forms of full contact karate. Although the bill seems to focus on so-called combat sports, its flexible language could presumably include other contact sports such as wrestling or rugby as well. The introduction to HB 1526 explains, while acknowledging the importance, benefits, and values that can be derived from participating in these sports, this bill also recognizes the paramount need to protect the minors. Such responsibility is imposed on parents, guardians, schools, and sports associations because the minors are incapacitated to give consent nor can they waive any right of action for injuries inflicted upon them during and in connection with such activities. Not surprisingly, sports organizers vehemently objected to the proposal, with 30 national sports associations or NSAs signing a petition paper rejecting the bill. Philippine Olympic Committee and Cavite 8th District Representative Abraham Tolentino also voiced his opposition to the bill, saying that it could fatally harm the Philippines' best chances for medals in the Olympics and other international competitions. The quest for Olympic medals is actually a rather vacuous reason to reject HB 1526, but there is a great deal of social value for young people in competitive sports of any kind, including martial arts and similar sports. Sporting competition promotes physical fitness and good health and instills the values of discipline, teamwork, goal setting, and good sportsmanship. Taking away any opportunity for youth to experience those benefits is not something that should be done without compelling reasons to do so. However, the risk of physical harm is undeniable and is magnified for young people whose bodies are still growing and developing. Medical research has in recent years discovered that injuries such as concussions or joint injuries can have serious long-term health consequences for athletes of any age and is, in most cases, more severe than was long assumed. While a certain level of injury risk in any sport is unavoidable, the authors of HB 1526 have made a worthwhile observation that young athletes may not be sufficiently competent to decide to accept those risks in potentially dangerous sports. Congress should deliberate on HB 1526 carefully and seek the input of competent experts in doing so, all the while keeping the best interest of young people who would be affected by passage or rejection of the measure as the sole priority. Alternatives to an outright ban should also be carefully considered. It may be more reasonable, for example, to limit the scope of the bill to only those sports with the highest risk. One recommendation from Filipino Wushu champion Agatha Wong may also be worth examining. In a recent interview with the Manila Times, Wong suggested that setting a minimum age limit of 11 to 13 years old might be a good compromise. At that age, Wong explained, children are sufficiently mature to properly understand their sport, yet are still young enough to begin the years of training needed to develop into world-class athletes. And that's the editorial for Wednesday, December 9, 2020. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to our digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 
and listen to The Voice of the Times.